so like I said, I was doing, uh, I stopped, so I started a PhD um, and started it, um, I would say with a lot of, with a good reputation and I'd got funding that was quite hard to get, you know, I almost like I'm on the edge of a cliff and this is my, this is all the possibility. And then I had a, um, a tough year personally. And one of the things that happened is my father died and it, it's very cliched but it sort of made me rethink things um and one of the things that um made me sort of think things so my dad was a, a very it's scientist so completely different to where I was going but a very intelligent man and he had a study that was full of books that he was saving to retirement and I was when that he didn't you know didn't make it to retirement or even close to retirement and he sort of think I was I remember just thinking I do not want to be like that at the moment I'm working insanely and this is not what I want to do um, and there are other factors as well as to why I left academia but one of the drivers was I want to be delivering things now and one of the things I I sort of butted against um, was um, I wanted my research to be doing something practical so I, I worked with squeegee kids um, who you know they wash the windows oh, yeah. of cars yeah. Um, and like homeless kids and that was my focus and I wanted my research to to change something for the better which sounds a little bit trite um, but I would get criticized and be like well that's applied geography you know you need to do the theory which I, I do understand um, but when my father died and I was sort of reassessing things I was like no this is this is not right for me I want to be doing something that I can I can see that's the outcome, or at least I'm setting up the framework for whoever takes it on to deliver it. And it came back to the UK. Um, I won't pretend I knew I was going to planning because I absolutely did not. Um, ended up in planning um, and not a million miles away from what I was doing research-wise really. Um, and, and yeah, that was definitely a watershed moment. And I think from there, it's, it's, I think for me, it's harder to pinpoint watershed moments since I've started um, working in town planning except that I uh, somewhat idealistically I guess I I do want to make things better and and um, I don't want to necessarily be just lining developers pockets um, and so on and you know I've I've worked I've you know I'm lucky who I've worked for um, client wise um, but I have also avoided some clients um, like if the company makes weapons and things like that and I, I have no interest in 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 helping that really um and where I am now one of the great attractions for me was there is that kind of social element and that drive is yes it's development but there's a focus on affordable and 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 the, the sort of the good stuff um that is a, a focus and I find that very appealing how did you end up in planning? I mean, there, there must have been countless. You could have gone into research. You could have gone in all, all sorts of management consultancy. So I came back to London, not knowing what I was doing. I was tempted, um, and I was very lucky. I so I tempted for a, as luck would have it, a property recruitment consultant. Um, and it was I was in, I was there a couple of weeks, um, and I I was a bit bored, so I did more than I was asked. And one of the partners noticed, and he's. He basically asked me what I was doing with my life. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, and I, I said the areas that I was um, interested in, which was pretty, pretty diverse, to be honest. And then he set up some interviews for me um, and it went from there. I obviously grabbed it with both hands, like yeah. in terms of that opportunity. But also I was lucky that that happened. Um, and I was lucky that when I had those conversations with people um, because of um, who I'd been set up with, they were, you know, like the I ended up at CBRE, Stuart Robinson. I had a chat with Stuart Robinson, like, you know, which would never have happened normally. Um, and it meant that I had a proper sort of insight into what um, that company was about and what he was looking for and so on. So it was, it was a chat. And it was also, to be honest, I think, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing sometimes, but I absolutely benefited from not really knowing the significance of being going in to see Stuart Robinson. I was like, yeah, of course I'll go and have a chat with him. Blah, 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 blah. What's and his name it, again? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it, it just means you're a bit more relaxed. So, and it all sort of works through from there. 